Welcome to the lecture on strong valid inequalities. Uh, so previously we looked at the general purpose methods for generating the cuts or valid inequalities. In particular we looked at the Gomery cuts and the Huatl Gomery cuts. And in this lecture we'll focus on the techniques that are not as general uh, but still they're sufficiently general for them to be interesting. Uh, similarly to how bodybuilders work on developing one group of muscles at a time to obtain the best overall result, we are going to focus on uh, one type of inequalities at a time that constitute some special structures within integer programs. All right, so in particular, we'll look at the click inequalities, uh, the knapsack cover inequalities, and the flow cover inequalities. And we'll also discuss uh, along the way some techniques for proving that a given valid inequality is a facet. Uh, we'll look at how we can do lifting to obtain stronger inequalities. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger will tell you that uh, to become stronger you need to do some heavy lifting, right? And uh, we will also look at how we deal with the separation problem. So this first video dedicated to the lecture will focus on the click inequalities and we'll also touch upon the topics like proving the facets and uh, solving the separation problem. Okay, we'll start the discussion of the click inequalities by recalling the maximum weight independent set problem, also known as the maximum weight stable set problem. Uh, so in this problem we are given a simple undirected graph that we typically denote by G with the set of vertices given by uh, V and the set of edges E. And we want to find uh, the largest weight a subset of vertices uh, such that no two vertices in this set are adjacent to each other. And uh, the weights are associated with all the vertices. So, for example, the weight of uh, the vertex 1 is 7, the weight of the vertex 2 is 5, and so on. So we have the following integer programming formulation for this problem. Uh, we want to maximize uh, the sum of uh, Wi's Xi's, where Wi denotes uh, the weight of the i vertex, and this summation is over all the vertices in the set V, and we have the so-called edge constraints. For every edge in the set E, we will have the following constraints. So Xi plus Xj is less than or equal to 1 for every edge Ij in the set E. Okay, uh, so clearly this constraint tells us that we can only pick one of the vertices I or J if they form an edge. So, and uh, these variables are all binary of course, so Xi belongs to 0, 1 for every I in the set V. Uh, clearly, by setting all the variables to one half, we will have a feasible solution to the LP relaxation, uh, which will give us uh, the total summation of all the weights uh, divided by two in the objective. And clearly, this is not a great formulation, so the LP relaxation is not of very good quality. But uh, the good news is that we can actually strengthen uh, this formulation by uh, expanding these inequalities by adding some extra variables on the left hand side. And we can actually add the variables that correspond to um, the expansions of these edges to clicks. So for example, if I look at the edge 1, 2, uh, so instead of having x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 1, I could also add the variable x4 to the left hand side. So you would have the inequality x1 plus x2 plus x4 is less than or equal to 1, uh, because clearly we can only pick one vertex from every click uh, to belong to an independent set. So this gives a rise to the click inequality. So whenever I have a click, so if C 
is a click in the graph then the following inequality the summation of uh, x i's for i in the set c less than or equal to 1 is valid uh, for our formulation Uh, so here, step of G uh, denotes the set of uh, all feasible points uh, for our formulation. Okay, uh, what we are interested in here is uh, the stable set polytope, which is the convex hull of feasible solutions for our IP formulation, or the convex hull of this set uh, step of G. So we are interested in the stable set polytope, which is the convex hull of all the points in the set step of G. And particularly we want to try to develop the strongest uh, possible formulation based on these click inequalities. Alright, so intuitively the larger are the clicks, uh, the better and the stronger the formulation will be. Uh, so let's look at uh, this example uh, that we have and let's write down the formulation based on the click inequalities. Uh, we have uh, maximize, uh, so we have the weights uh, given for every vertex, so it's going to be 7x1 plus 5x2 plus 2x3 plus 6x4 uh, plus 2x5 and plus 3x6. So that's the objective. And then uh, we'll write down the constraints. Uh, whenever the edge set can be expanded uh, on the left by adding extra vertices uh, to form a clique, we will do that. But in some situations, uh, like for example, 2, 6 is already a maximal clique and we cannot add the extra vertices. Uh, so it will be just x2 plus x6 is less than or equal to 1. So, But let's start from uh, the clicks containing the vertex 1. So we'll have x1 plus x2 plus x4 is less than or equal to 1. Then uh, 1 also belongs to another uh, maximal click here, uh, 1, 4, 5. So the other inequality will be x1 plus x4 plus x5 is less than or equal to 1. And um, uh, the vertex 2 belongs to two other maximal cliques in addition to the clique 1, 2, 4. Uh, the second clique would be 2, 3, 4. And the third one would be 2, 6. Alright, so we have x2 plus x3 plus x4 is less than or equal to 1 and then uh, x2 plus x6 is less than or equal to 1. Next, uh, vertex 3 only belongs to one maximal clique which is 2, 3, 4 and we already wrote down the inequality for that. So we move on to vertex 4. Uh, vertex 4 belongs to several maximal cliques and I think we already listed all of them. So the first one would be 1, 4, 5, uh, the other one would be 1, 2, 4 and uh, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so vertex 4 already is uh, covered by these inequalities here. We move on to vertex 5. And for the vertex 5, again, it's a part of the clique 1, 4, 5, uh, which we already listed. And uh, the only remaining edge that is incident to 5, uh, which we haven't uh, listed yet in this set, would be 5, 6. Uh, so we have x5 plus x6 is less than or equal to 1. So this gives us the complete formulation for our problem, except for, of course, we need to add uh, the uh, binary constraints for all the variables, so for i between uh, 1 and 6. You have xi is uh, in this set 0, 1. 
Um, and this formulation describes uh, the best we can do in terms of the clicks uh, because we essentially wrote down all the constraints here for all the maximal clicks in this graph. And next we are going to show that indeed this is the best you can do in terms of this click inequalities. All right, uh, just listing all the uh, click inequalities corresponding to all the maximal clicks in the graph is uh, your best possible situation by using this type of constraints. So how do we show this? Uh, so what we're gonna do, first of all, we'll show that uh, you only need to write down these inequalities for maximal clicks. And this is kind of straightforward because if let's say I have a click C and then uh, it is a subset of a larger click uh, C prime, for example, uh, then uh, if I look at the inequality, the summation for Xi's uh, for i in the set C less than or equal to 1 and I look at the click inequality for the summation of xi's over C prime less than or equal to 1 then clearly this inequality is going to be stronger because uh, the summation over C prime is gonna be at least as large as the summation over C because C is a subset of C prime. So clearly, if you want to produce the strongest possible formulation for the maximum independent set problem uh, based on this click inequalities only, then we need to focus on the maximal click inequalities. Uh, we don't uh, need to uh, include the inequalities of this sort where C is not a maximal click because they'll be redundant. All right. So therefore, if you want to write down this formulation, uh, then uh, we need to consider the following feasible regions. So we are looking at uh, the set of X's in uh, 0, 1 uh, to the power N. Let's n uh, denote the number of vertices, so n is uh, uh, the cardinality of v, such that all the maximal click inequalities are satisfied. Uh, so you have the summation over i is uh, in C of x i's must be less than or equal to 1 for every click C that is maximal. So let's denote uh, the set of all maximal clicks by this uh, C here. All right, C, the set of all maximal clicks in G. So then um, the question is, do we really need to consider all the maximal clicks uh, to produce uh, the strongest possible formulations? Uh, of course, they'll not hurt on the one hand, uh, but on the other hand, uh, there are many different maximal clicks in the graph. So in fact, we can show that uh, you can have up to three to the power n over three uh, maximal clicks in the graph. Um, so if there is a possibility for us to skip some of these inequalities and maybe, you know, restrict our attention to a subset of them. Um, that would be great, right? So, but if we want to obtain the strongest possible relaxation and the best possible uh, description of a stable set polytope based on the click inequalities, uh, we will actually show that every single maximal click inequality matters. All right, so we will do this by uh, producing a point that will be satisfied by every single maximal click inequality except for one, okay? So consider an arbitrary maximal click. And um, what we'll do, we'll define the point X with the component xi's given by 1 over cardinality of c minus 1 if i belongs uh, to the click 
and zero otherwise. All right, so maybe let's denote this by x i bar, okay? And um, we can show that this point will actually satisfy every single maximal click inequality except for the one written for our click C. Okay, so first let's show that um, this point would be infeasible with respect to the maximal click inequality corresponding to C. So the summation of um, x i bars for i in the set C is going to be given by uh, the cardinality of C divided by the cardinality of C minus 1, which is greater than 1. So clearly, uh, the inequality, the maximal clique inequality for our clique, which is given by the summation of x i over C is less than or equal to 1, is not going to be satisfied, all right? On the other hand, we will show that uh, this point x bar that we produced will be feasible with respect to every other maximal click inequality different from this one, for which it is not feasible. All right, so let's consider another maximal click C prime, which is different from C. The fact that it is a different uh, click uh, from C means that uh, the overlap of C and C prime uh, cannot contain one of these uh, clicks inside, right? So because uh, this would mean that one of them is not maximal. So in particular, this means that the cardinality of this set cannot exceed uh, the cardinality of C minus one. Okay, so therefore, if you write down the sum of x i bars over i's in C prime, then it's going to be less than or equal to the summation of uh, all of these terms here, 1 over the cardinality of C minus 1, and uh, there are no more than C minus 1 terms of this sort, so clearly it's going to be then less than or equal to cardinality of C minus 1 divided by the cardinality of C minus 1, which is 1. So therefore, this means that all other uh, maximal click inequalities are satisfied, just uh, as we wanted to show. And uh, essentially, what we have shown is that for every single maximal click inequality, we can find a point that doesn't satisfy this inequality but satisfy all the remaining maximal click inequalities. This means that no maximal click inequality is uh, redundant in this set. Okay, so we cannot drop any of these if you want to have the tightest possible description for uh, this set based on the maximal click inequalities. Uh, next, we are going to show that uh, the maximal click inequalities in fact induce uh, facets of the stable set polytope. Okay, let's denote by a stub of G with capital uh, stub of G the convex hull of uh, the small case uh, step of G that we defined before. So, and remember, uh, this set was uh, the set of all the binary vectors that satisfy the edge uh, inequalities. Okay, so essentially, uh, these are all the characteristic vectors of the stable sets in G. So, the convex hull of all the characteristic vectors of the stable sets. Uh, so then, if we consider an arbitrary maximal click, then the maximal click inequality in 
given by the summation for i in c of x i's less than or equal to 1 induces a facet of uh, stop g. Okay, to prove this, first we will show that uh, stub of G is a full dimensional polytope. All right, first, stub of G is full dimensional. Which means that the dimension of uh, stub of G equals n. So to prove this we need to find um, n plus 1 are uh, finally independent points uh, that belong to stub of G. So n plus 1 are uh, finally independent points And they're easy to produce. Um, let's uh, denote by zero the origin and then by EI we will denote the vector that has uh, the ith component uh, equal to one and the rest uh, entries are zeros. Okay, so this is the so-called ith uh, orth uh, vector. So essentially this is the characteristic vector of uh, a single vertex uh, in the graph, all right, and uh, clearly these points for i all i's in V, they will form a set of a finely independent points because if we subtract zero from e i's, they'll form a set of n linearly independent uh, vectors, right? Okay, so this implies that stub of G is a full dimensional polytope. Uh, next. To show that a maximal click inequality induces a facet, what we need to do is we need to produce n finely independent points such that For each of these points you have the summation of x i's over i in c is equal to 1 and of course um, x is feasible so it's be it belongs to uh, the polytope. So we need to come up with n independent sets uh, whose characteristic vectors satisfy this equation and uh, that are a finely independent, all right? So the independent sets consisting of a single vertex uh, that belongs to C are perfect candidates uh, that will produce some of these points, right? So we'll have uh, uh, the ORT vectors for I's that belong to C. These give us as many vectors uh, as there are vertices in C, okay, so but, but we need more, we need n of them. Then looking at the vertices from outside of C, uh, consider j that doesn't belong to C, then clearly because uh, C is a maximal clique, uh, there is a vertex i in C such that i j doesn't belong to the set E. So essentially j is not adjacent to C. So if uh, j was adjacent to all the vertices from C then uh, C wouldn't be a maximal clique because we could have added uh, j to this clique. All right. So therefore if we consider the ORT of i plus the ORT of j so where i j doesn't belong to the set E, then 
this will give us uh, the remaining n minus uh, c uh, vectors you know so we do it for every vertex uh, j outside of c and then um, for every vertex j like this we are going to find uh, one vertex i inside of c such that i j is not an edge and uh, therefore this will give us uh, the corresponding vector uh, for this vertex uh, j so now we have the total of n uh, vectors and clearly they'll be a finely independent and uh, therefore this shows that uh, we have the face of dimension n minus 1 therefore it is a facet all right so this uh, completes the proof Next, we are going to look at uh, click inequalities in more general context uh, than just a stable set problem. And the first situation we'll consider is the maximum weight uh, set packing problem, which generalizes the maximum weight uh, stable set. Um, and to make the transition from the stable set to the set packing as smooth as possible, I decided to introduce the concept of set packing using the hypergraphs. All right, so the hypergraph is uh, a generalization of a graph where the edges can essentially have more than two vertices. In a regular simple graph, uh, your edges consist of pairs of vertices, and in a hypergraph, you can have three or more vertices that correspond to an edge. So in this figure, we illustrate the concept of a hypergraph. Uh, say the green edge corresponds to uh, the hyper edge 1, 2, 4. The black hyper edge consists of three vertices 1, 4, and 5. And this hyper edge consists of three vertices again 2, 4, and 5. And then there are two hyper edges that are the same as the regular edges in a simple graph where we have just two vertices per edge, so you have 2, 6, and 5, 6 here. All right. So, and in this problem, we are looking to find, again, uh, the independent set, essentially, meaning that you're going to pick at most one vertex from every hyper edge uh, that can be included in your set. And uh, we call this the set packing, actually. All right, so we are given a hypergraph which will denote by V and let me denote the set of hyper edges by H all right so this is a hypergraph so essentially V is gonna be at the set of vertices 1 2 through n and then H is going to be the set of hyper edges that will denote by H1, H2, and so on, HM. And in this example, uh, we have uh, V is given by the vertices from 1 to 6. And then the set H of hi hyper edges is given by uh, the following hyper edges. Uh, so first, let's list the ones that contain three vertices. I will have one, two, four. Then uh, one, four, five. Uh, two, three, four. And then there are two hyper edges consisting of just two vertices, 2, 6, and 5, 6. Okay. Uh, so, a uh, set packing. Let's denote it by C. Is uh, a subset of vertices such that no two vertices from the same hyper edge uh, can belong uh, to this uh, set, all right? So 
So IJ cannot be a subset of any hyper edge. K, let's say, for K between 1 and M. For any uh, subset of uh, C. Okay, so then we can formulate this problem as uh, maximize the summation of uh, Wi's Xi's as before for I in V such that now the summation of Xi's because instead of edges we have hyper edges the sums should be taken not over just the pairs uh, representing the edges but uh, over the hyper edges so here you would have i uh, belongs to a hyper edge hk and this is supposed to be less than or equal to 1 for k between 1 and m and of course, uh, Xi's are binary. Okay, so here we have the formulation for uh, the maximum weight uh, set packing. And um, we can easily see the correspondence uh, between this problem and the maximum weight stable set or the maximum weight independent set in graphs. Uh, so this graph here essentially represents the same problem in terms of the maximum weight independent set problem. Uh, the way we obtain this graph uh, right here, for every hyper edge, we are going to add a click in this graph that corresponds to all the vertices included in the hyper edge. So for example, for 1, 5, 4, we have a hyper edge here, and we are going to add all three edges, 1, 4, 1, 5, and 4, 5, uh, to represent this hyper edge uh, in our graph. And we'll do it for every hyper edge, and um, as a result, we will obtain what we call the intersection graph corresponding to our set packing problem. Uh, so we call this the intersection graph. So there are some cases where um, the edge in our graph corresponds to the intersection of hyper edges. So for example, for 2,6, uh, sorry, for 2,4, uh, we have uh, two hyper edges passing through this pair of vertices, and this is reflected by a single edge in our intersection graph. All right, so, but what's important is that a stable set in our graph uh, will correspond to a set packing in the hypergraph. And um, this uh, correspondence can uh, go as both ways because, you know, if I have a regular graph and I write down the maximum weight set packing problem for the regular graph, uh, I mean, not regular, but a simple undirected graph, then what I'll get will be exactly the maximum stable set problem in the graph. So essentially, you can uh, switch between these two problems. And uh, when I go to the intersection graph model, then this formulation that we obtained here corresponds to the clique formulation, essentially. So because now these inequalities uh, corresponding to the hyper edges in the hyper graph, they become the clique inequalities for our intersection graph. Okay. So, and now, to solve the maximum weight set packing problem, we can essentially use uh, the same uh, methods as we used for the stable set. So, therefore, these click inequalities apply in this context uh, as well. And uh, in many situations where you have the packing type inequalities, where the sum of variables is less than or equal to 1, the click inequalities can be replaced with stronger maximal click inequalities as we just discussed for the maximum stable set problem. Of course, for this example, every hyper edge 
corresponds to a maximal click in our graph. Uh, but uh, let's say if here we had an edge, for example, between 1 and 3, uh, after adding this edge to the graph, we can see that we would have a click of size 4, and then we could replace uh, the inequality where the sum of three variables is less than or equal to 1 with a stronger inequality where the sum of four variables is less than or equal to 1. Another pretty general situation where the click inequalities are very useful is connected to the concept of a conflict graph. A conflict graph can be constructed for an arbitrary binary integer program. Uh, so usually you have a vertex corresponding to every variable xi and also the complement of this variable 1 minus xi. So clearly xi and 1 minus xi cannot be equal to 1 at the same time. So you would have uh, essentially a representation where uh, this will be xi node, this will be xi bar node, uh, which is 1 minus xi, and you can put an edge here saying that both of them cannot be equal to 1 at the same time. Uh, so, but also, let's say if I have an inequality in the form xi is less than or equal to xj, then this can be represented as an equivalent inequality xi plus 1 minus xj is uh, less than or equal to 1. And this is essentially an edge inequality as well. And uh, say if I had this variable xj here or a complement of xj represented by this node, then I could put an edge in my conflict graph. So essentially the edges in the conflict graph correspond to the pairs of uh, variables and their complements such that both of them cannot be equal to one at the same time. So there is a conflict uh, with uh, assignment of one and therefore the name uh, the conflict graph. And then of course when you have the conflict graph and you have pairwise conflicts between the variables and their complements and uh, you find a large clique, then you can replace all of these um, inequalities involving only pairs of variables with a much uh, tighter inequality where you have a large number of variables that are included in this clique in the conflict graph and their summation is uh, less than or equal to one. All right. So this again is a pretty widely applicable technique. Uh, now, we have seen the situations where we started by looking at the maximum weight stables uh, set problem uh, in uh, a simple undirected graph and we saw that the maximal click inequality uh, produce uh, the facets for this problem and then we further generalized this to set packing and then we saw that uh, all of this can be applied uh, in a general setting of the conflict graph that can be built uh, for many binary integer programs. So it is uh, clear that uh, detecting this maximal click inequalities can be very helpful for solving binary integer programs. And then uh, we saw also that there can be an exponential number of these maximal click inequalities. So then the question arises, uh, how do we add them if there are too many of them? And uh, in practice, usually you don't generate them all, but instead you can try to generate them uh, along the way. Essentially, uh, you can do it in a lazy fashion when, uh, say, you know, you generate some, then you find the LP relaxation solution, and then if uh, this solution is not binary, then you want to see if it satisfies all the maximal click inequalities or not. And uh, how do you verify that it doesn't? So you need to solve what we call a separation problem. So we need to find out if uh, there exists a maximal click in the graph, such that for your fractional solution to the LP relaxation, this uh, click inequality is not satisfied. All right, so the separation problem, 
we have is a given a vector x that is typically fractional and it is a solution to the LP relaxation uh, of your problem. So let's call it x bar actually. Uh, does there exist a maximal click in G such that uh, the corresponding maximal click inequality is violated, meaning that uh, the summation of xi bars over c is uh, greater than 1. So, of course, in general, this is not an easy question to answer because essentially you need to solve the maximum weight uh, click problem to address this question. So um, you could treat the components of this variable x bar as the weights of the corresponding vertices. And then what you need to do is uh, to find uh, the maximum weight, maximal click uh, in your graph uh, with these weights. And then, you know, if the weight of that uh, maximum weight click is greater than 1, then you obtain a cutting plane, so you generate the corresponding maximal click inequality and add it to your model to cut off uh, this uh, solution x bar. Uh, so, but uh, if the maximum weight click has the weight uh, less than or equal to 1, then this means that all the maximal click inequalities are satisfied for this point and you cannot uh, further improve your solution by using the maximal click inequalities. Okay, so uh, again, solving the maximum weight click problem is uh, NP hard, but um, instead we could typically use some heuristics. Uh, usually, separation problem is solved using some efficient heuristics. Um, and uh, of course, if heuristic produces a click of the weight which is greater than one, then you are lucky and you can generate the cut. If it doesn't produce the click of the weight uh, which is greater than 1, then uh, you cannot really claim with certainty that uh, there is none and you cannot uh, find uh, a cut using the maximal click inequalities. But again, this is just a heuristic and uh, you know we need to balance the speed with the quality of the solution. 3. Uh, clearly, you don't want to spend too much time generating a cut uh, because, you know, if you end up spending a lot of time just to generate a cut and then the benefit of this cut in terms of the improvement in the quality of the solution is marginal, then maybe it's not worth uh, generating the cut uh, to start with. I'll be back.